Hey, hope you guys are well. Joel from Cringe Technologies here. You know what, funny enough, one of my videos, which seems to had quite a few views, was when I talked about my career path to IT and the courses I did to get to, you know, how I started and whatnot. When people talk about their courses, they don't connect it or associate it with the role or give you guys a visual of how the discourse and how does it support the role, support you in your IT skills and how it helps you to be able to do your job. Does that make sense? Let me try that again. So they never connect the course with the role. So like the real life of how these courses will benefit you. That's what I meant to say. Again, I always bring up CompTIA A+. I bring that up because it really does cover all the basics and gives you a good foundational knowledge on IT. So operating system, hardware, networking, maybe mobile devices, I think virtualization. Yeah, these are off the top of my head. They've kind of improved it over the years. So when I took it many moons ago, it didn't have half of the stuff. So they've actually incorporated a few more things which will help you in today's modern world regarding IT. As always, I'm always at a school very rarely businesses. I should actually show you some of the businesses I do look after. Okay, cool. So for example, I'm in a school, I just came in. I'm in the PPA room, setting up this PC for a new member of staff. Anyway, so this specific PC, this one here, member of staff complains to say that it's running slow and also some messages about storage. Now, funny enough, logging into this wasn't slow at all. Let's see how long it takes to sign out. Cool, so C-R-I-N-G. Here we go. As you can see, we're still using Windows 10 on this operating system. So we're starting this. Yep, cool. The longest it should take to log into a PC should be 60 seconds. That's the longest it should take. So it should anything below 60 seconds is pretty good. Obviously, as you can see, I was able to log in straight away. There'll be different variations of why some machines take longer to log into others. It could be scripts, could be accessing domain resources, like for example, group policies when you're logging in. So I normally say around about, you know, 60 seconds or less is a decent logging in time. Anything else quicker than that, great. Now, as you can see, that machine logged in fine. So if you're thinking about the concept of how CompTIA can assist you with these things, it obviously teaches you about operating system and it teaches you about hardware. Now, when someone mentions to me, if it's slow, so you're not determining if it's a hardware problem or if it's an operating system problem, the speed of how the machine just logged in and the speed of how the machine just booted up, it basically process of elimination, I don't think is a hardware problem. So when you do the course like CompTIA, it will also emphasize talks about performances and understanding the difference between operating system performance and hardware and how they coincide with each other and how both can actually affect each other in either way. So the teacher said to me, this machine was slow. I've determined this machine hardware wise works okay. So the next thing I'm going to do is kind of navigate around the system. I'll probably go into task manager just to have a quick look into if there's anything running in the background, which slows things down. There we go. The CPU, I'm gonna show you performance. You've got the CPU, this is a chip, that's running okay. Memory, eight, but it's about standard to be fair in a sense of like where it should be. This is also a generation eight PC. So you're talking about 2000, I think it's 2015 to 2017. I think this is when this generation came out. So I see that it's, what, it's between those 2015, 2017. Don't quote me on that. So the minimum requirements for Windows 10, eight gig. I think the minimum requirement was four gig to be fair for Windows 10, but this is Windows 10 Pro with 64 gig operating system. So the memory is actually, you know, they say sufficient enough. I'm more of a 16 gig memory person, but anyway, this space is fine. Ethernet speed speed is fine and the gpu the graphics card is just doing the basic stuff you know videos browsing internet world processing nothing challenging not rendering not video editing not gaming so yeah so it's fine the speeds here are fine let me bring that back up again i was just showing you the, the hardware element of things if there's any specific apps which are using the operating system resources more than what it should be it looks okay to me at the moment so everything seems to be kind of calm so yeah i don't see any apps which look like they've taken a lot of resources all right so then she's mentioning okay so why is it slow so she did mention something about low storage so let's check on that open up file world look at the system pc on the windows c you'll see that the storage space is a bit low i mean free space is four gig out of 235 gig this is the network drive so don't worry about that this is the c drive which is associated to the workstation it's the hard drive on the workstation so this is important this is just a network drive path to a server which had nothing to do with the performance of this machine. This is the baby. This could cause a problem depending if they've got multiple applications running and it's causing, it starts to use a lot more resources and then therefore it can make the C drive go really low. Four gigs still quite a bit. I can't really see it. I mean, if it said like four, let's say megabytes, like in the megabytes or kilobytes regions, then yeah, but it's, 
Four gig. But I'll take her word from it because she didn't mention that the machine was talking about low storage. So it is low anyway. This is too low in general. So I'm not saying it's not low, but for it to prompt up the message, I would have expected it to be less than a gig, but it says it's four gig at the moment. So maybe something is actually being used in the background. Okay, cool. So how do you reduce the size or free up some space? What we can do, because this is connected to a domain, we can check if there's any user profiles, Roman profiles, which are large that we could remove to free up some space. Now for it, this is taking quite long to open up. So that means there's quite a lot of Roman profiles, which is collecting our local profiles as well. So we'll see if there's a lot of uh, user profiles, which may have large profile files. They're large in size. Cool, so it's up. Great, yay. So you got two gig of hair, one gig hair, one gig hair, two gig, five gig, one five. Okay, so you've got a few Roman profiles with 18 gigs, this is a big one here. Now you're probably wondering why are these profiles so large? Okay, cool. Now a thing called Roman profile, when if it's not done correctly, now this school is one school I've taken over and I haven't created these servers. I haven't created the domains. I didn't do the group policies. I didn't do the Roman profiles. Now there are ways of doing Roman profiles so it doesn't collect so much information. And Roman profiles is when a user logs in and they have their setup, their desktop the way they like, they have their wallpaper the way they like, they have the icons the way they like, they customize it and then therefore it follows with them to any machine that they log on. The look and feel stays the same with any machine they log on within the network. Now that's great, wonderful, but if you don't configure that properly or set it properly it starts to get bloated you can actually start with the more you use your profile the more it collects your data it collects your data even sometimes it keeps your downloads it might keep some certain files it shouldn't be keep and it'll drag that along with you collecting your data as you're consistently using it over the years now there's ways of minimizing that where sometimes people are unaware of how to customize it so it only takes a few things and make sure the roman profile stays on the server and doesn't copy or replicate what's on the server as a profile down to the local hard drive of the PC because sometimes that happens it makes an identical duplicate of what's on the Roman profile on the server your profile and then copies it down to the local PC anyway so cut long story short as you can see from the local profiles there's quite a lot of profiles with large sizes so we've now determined what the cause of what's reducing the size of the C drive so what I'm going to do individually, which is annoying enough, but this is the best place to delete. You need to delete it from this area. Some people go into the file explorer, C drive, user, and then delete it from this point. This doesn't delete it from the registry. This doesn't delete it fully from the operating system. So you need to do it from system properties and user profiles. This removes it correctly. So I'm gonna select a specific staff member, go delete, and this one's like 18 gigs. So it's gonna free up a nice little space on there. Now, while that's doing that, theoretically, that could be what's been causing the performance issue because the C drive was becoming low. Now, obviously I saw four gig there, which I still think that should be okay. It shouldn't really flag up messages, but you never know. I'm not here 24 seven, I don't know. I'm just taking a word from it from the teacher. And she did say she got message every now and again about assume the storage based on the C drive which is causing because obviously you saw the red and you saw you know it's 235 gig of hard drive space and it's only like four gig free available so yeah you're doing maths with CompTIA with the course you'll be able to determine these things regarding operating system and hardware that's the beauty of it that's why I love it because you need to understand the fundamentals of these machines to then understand the larger scales because when you're doing diagnosis or when you're doing the process of elimination you have to quickly work out the smaller possibilities before you go to the larger possibilities if that makes sense so i know it wasn't anything to do with the server roman profiles in the sense of like the logging in process so let's say for example i was logging in connecting to the server that could be a problem that can slow the piece day down that didn't happen so the logins were smooth it was straight regarding the hardware what i was just on it showed me that there wasn't any hardware issues also check the processors to see what applications were running in the background that they were interfering with anything and and obviously factoring the fact that the teacher mentioned to me that there's a storage issue so that was easy for me to determine and also the course which is competitor a helps you determine these things locally and then also it definitely go on virtualization that's gone network as well you know before when i was took it it didn't go into depth about those things you had to do like individual more courses to go a bit more higher up but competitor a is actually incorporated a lot more things like virtualization and network because it's very much involved now things are more advanced operating systems are doing more now so i would say that's why they've included it and i think it's the right thing to do so that's why i think it's a great foundational course so 
So that is part one of the course that I would recommend to do. And the next video will be part two, which will be another course that I would recommend after you do the CompTIA. Okay, all right, see you guys on the next one.